remotely via Zoom. Today's date is June 21st, 2021. The time is approximately 1 o'clock p.m. Ms. Sewell, what city are you located? Homestead, Florida. Thank you. The witness is located in Homestead, Florida. My name is Sylvia Evans. I'm located in Miami, Florida. I'm administering the oath and reporting this deposition remote. May I see your ID, please? Just a minute. Oh, let's see. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, would counsel please take your appearance for the record and express your stipulation that the deposition will not take place from Dr. James Eric McDonough, I'm the pro se plaintiff, and I agree to the stipulation. I'm Zess, kind of voice or a health man on behalf of the city of Homestead and the witness. And we agree to the stipulation that the deposition and oath may be conducted remotely. Thank you. Ms. Sewell, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you back? Yes, ma'am. Okay, could you state your name and occupation for the record? Elizabeth Sewell, city clerk. Okay, and if Ms. Sewell, if you don't hear or understand any of my questions, please ask me to repeat it and I'll be happy to. Uh, please don't answer any questions you don't understand and please allow me to finish my question before you answer. If you need to take a bathroom break at any time or use the bathroom, please let me know and we can pause the deposition. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm having a hard time seeing you, Ms. Sewell. Could you adjust your camera a little bit for us? Thank you. How long have you been employed by the city of Homestead, Ms. Sewell? Approximately 10 years. And your current title is city clerk? Yes, sir. And what are your general responsibilities? Um, supervisor of elections, custodian of public records, um, coordinator for the agendas for council meetings, providing notice of all council meetings, um, Notorial acts, I'm responsible for carrying those out, signing off on documents. I mean, those are some of my duties. Okay, well, I appreciate that, thank you. Um, have you had any other positions at Homestead? No. And what did you do before you worked at Homestead? I worked for the city of Golden Beach. Were you the city clerk there as well? Yes. And for approximately how long? About four years. Okay. And we established your public records custodian for this city. And by that, I mean the city of Homestead, Florida, correct? Yes, sir. And displayed in your office or in the clerk's office prominently as a document naming you as such and providing your email? Yes, sir. And that email is esewell at cityofhomestead.com? Yes, sir. And how many years have you been responding to and working on Chapter 119 public records requests professionally as part of your employment? Uh, about 14 years. Okay. And have you received any training on Chapter 119? Yes. Can you describe any of this training? Uh, public records request training. Okay. And do you know how many times you received any type of chapter 119 training in your best estimation? Once. Just one time? That I can recall. Okay. And is the records custodian basically with public records requests, the buck stops with you? Would that be correct? Objection to form. Did you understand my question, Ms. Sewell? I'm not the only one involved in public records requests. But who's the highest person in charge of public records requests? Section of form. Oh, okay. Ms. Sewell, due to your training and many years of experience, would it be safe to say that you're an expert on Chapter 119? Section of form. I'm the custodian of records, Mr. McDonough. 
Is there any part of chapter 119 that you're not familiar with or don't feel that you understand? Section no. form. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Ms. Sewell, is there any part of chapter 119 you're not familiar with or don't understand? I'm not sure. Okay. Have you spoken with anyone about this case and or deposition? No. You haven't spoken with anyone about this lawsuit? Only counsel. Only counsel. You, you have spoken with counsel about this lawsuit. I, I don't know what you spoke to counsel about, but just that you have spoken to counsel. Yes. Ms. Sewell, has anyone ever coached you to be untruthful about any public records request? No. Has anyone coached you on what to say regarding anything work-related? No. Has anyone ever told you to handle my records request differently than others? No. Have you ever been untruthful under oath? No. Have you ever witnessed anyone being coached on what to say under oath in the scope of your official position? Objection no. to form. I, we've given a little leeway to the extent you were getting into her background, but now we're going outside of okay. uh, the scope of what's allowed by the, the court right. order. I'll, I'll withdraw. We can move along. Um, Ms. Sue, I want to look at some of the discovery responses. Let me pull up Exhibit 1, what we'll call Exhibit 1 here. Let me get this shared. Can you see this document, Ms. Sue? Yes. This is a City of Homestead's response and objection to my request for admissions. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. And I want to focus on admission two for a second. It says admit that the city failed to produce any records for the first record for the first records request for six weeks. Can you read your response or the response? Denied. Denied. Do you agree that that's accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can pull up another exhibit. This is exhibit A. Do you see this, Ms. Sewell? Yes. Okay. And do you see here, it says this email acknowledges receipt of your public records request dated October 31st, 2019. Yes. And the email was sent October 31st, 2019. So the same day I filed my request, it was acknowledged. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And let's look at exhibit, we'll call exhibit B. And Ms. Sewell, I'm going to just scroll down a little bit so you can see. You can follow the whole thing. You can see this is my records request. It was on October 31st, 2019. I requested copies of the nepotism policy that was allegedly changed in April 2016. So I filed this request on October 31st, 2019. And can you tell me the date that you're providing the responsive document, Ms. Sewell? December 16th. Okay. Ms. Sewell, let me bring up a calendar for you. Let me stop sharing this and see if I can get this calendar shared. Oops, one second. And this is 2019, so let's see here. Share with oh, well, here's a way I can move this around so you we can. Uh, okay, here we go.
So Ms. Sewell, can, can you see, this is 2019? Yes. Could you count for me the number of weeks from October 31st until December 16th? Six weeks, about six weeks. At six weeks? Okay, we, we agree that's six weeks, is that correct? Yes. All right, let's come back here to this exhibit. So here in request for admission two, it says admit the city failed to produce any records for the first request for six weeks. That's denied. We just admit it took six weeks to give me the records. Is that correct? Mr. McDonough, you produced your public record request the Friday before the election Tuesday, which was a very contentious election. Public records is not the only responsibility I have. I also have to do uh, supervising elections and elections doesn't end on election day. I have an election audit. I have certification of the election. I have swearing in of, of the elected officials. There's quite a few responsibilities that I have. So the record request was responded to as soon as I could. And you could have sent a reminder but you didn't, you filed a lawsuit instead. Well, that's not the question I asked, Ms. Sewell. That's what my answer, asking, Mr. It, 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 What I was asking is request for admission to ask the city to admit that it failed to produce the responsive records for, to the first request for six weeks. We just established it was six weeks. The response is denied. Would you agree that that response saying denied is improper or incorrect? Objection to form. I explained to you what my answer is. Uh, I, I, th that's nice, Ms. Sewell. Uh, I, I appreciate you being forthright in explaining yourself. Again, that's not the question. We agree that it was six weeks before the records were produced, correct? I've answered you, Mr. McKenna. Do you agree that the denial is incorrect? Objection to form. And the, the denial, she's already answered your question about the amount of time that it took. If you want to discuss the denial, we can discuss that off record in terms of the way your request was framed. But she's answered the question. Ms. Sewell, you said that I didn't remind you the records haven't been produced. Is there any requirement for a requester to remind a city that it hasn't complied with the chapter 119? No, Mr. McDonough, but it's a courtesy. Okay. Let's move on to request for admission number three. It says admit the city failed to produce any records until after the filing of the instant action. The response is denied. Would you agree that that denial is incorrect? Back to form. I do not agree. So you're saying that the denial is correct? I do not agree. What don't, do you, do you agree with denial or do you disagree with denial? I'm unclear. I answered you. I'm, I'm not sure what you're responding to, Ms. Sewell. It, is it you deny, you agree with the denial or you agree that the denial is incorrect? The denial is incorrect. The denial is incorrect. The denial, I agree with, listen, I answered you. Okay, all right. Let's stop sharing this for a second and let's find another exhibit here. We will call this exhibit three. Okay, Ms. Sewell, can you see this document? Yes. Okay, this is the court docket for this lawsuit. So I'm gonna scroll down here so you can see. Go slow so everybody can follow what I'm doing here. Okay, right here, we have the complaint, the petition for writer mandamus is filed. Could you read to me that date, Ms. Sewell? 
2019. All right, so that, that was produced on 12-12-2019. In the form. In, in the first set of records that was given to me in this request was produced on the 13th of December. The second set was provided on the 16th of December. Ms. Sewell, could you tell me which date comes earlier in the month of December, the 12th or the 13th? The 13th. The, the 12th, 13th sorry. The 12th? Mr. McDonough, the 12th. The 12th. So if the 12th comes before the 13th and I filed the lawsuit on the 12th and the records were not provided to me until the 13th, the records were provided to me after I filed the lawsuit. Would that be correct? Yes. Okay. So then would you say that the denial was incorrect now? Section of form. You have my answer. Okay, let's go back here. Try to share this. I want to focus on request for admission number four for a second. It says, admit that the first set of records produced to McDonough were not responsive to his request. The response was denied. Ms. Sewell, my records request was specifically for the April 2006 nepotism policy. On December 13th, I was provided with the 2011 nepotism policy. Object to form. Is that a question or just I'm, a statement? I'm not finished please. So if I requested the April 2006 policy, can you explain how the April 2011 policy would be responsive to a request for the April 06 policy? Check the form. Ms. Sewell, can you explain how the 2011 nepotism policy is responsive to a request for the 2006 nepotism policy? Check to form. Ms. Sewell, you can answer the question. Elizabeth, are you there? Are you able to, to hear Dr. McDonough? Uh, what did you say, I'm sorry? Could you explain how a copy of the 2011 nepotism policy would be responsive to a request asking for the 2006 nepotism policy? It's the policy, the policy that was provided and that's what I provided to you. But if the 06 policy is requested and the 2011 policy is produced, that policy is not responsive to the, the request. Is that correct? Check to form. Ms. Sewell, if the 2011 policy is responsive to, the 2000, to a request for the 2006 policy, can you please explain how that would be the case? Object to form. It I think you're you're lacking some foundation and predicate here that she's got the information that you're you're asking about. All right. Well, let me explain this to you, counselor, because you might understand this. Then, when I file these requests for admissions, I also concurrently filed a re interrogatories. The first interrogatory said for any denials or qualified admissions to please explain your denial or qualified admission to provide evidence supporting that and to identify any responsive or any witnesses with information or knowledge. Ms. Sewell signed that interrogatory with an affidavit under oath. Ms. Sewell, are you saying that when you filed your affidavit, you had no personal knowledge of anything that you were swearing to therein? Objection to form that's not, 
that's that's not what the witness has said, and that's not what I no, that's what I'm asking. That's what I I'm think asking. I think you're skipping some steps in terms of the reason why you're not getting the answer that you're looking for is maybe you you haven't asked the questions that would establish or, or what it is that you're asking and how the, the records were produced. You're just skipping to say, you're asking her whether a particular record is responsive. You're not showing her the request. You're not, you're not establishing how the response was provided. Um, Ms. Sewell, I, I showed you the records request. Would you like me to show you the records request again? Would that help you answer my questions? Mr. McDonough, I provided the record to you that was provided to the clerk's office. But the record that was provided to the clerk's office was an incorrect record. Is that correct? Section of form. It's the policy. It was not the 2006 policy, was it? It's what was in the HR handbook. That's what I provided to you. I sp it, do you know who retrieved that record? No, I don't. You do not. No, Did I you don't. Designate someone to retrieve that record. I do not recall. Okay. Let's go down to request five. Admit that the city did not produce the second set of records actually responsive to the request until after McDonough complained that the responsive document had not been produced. Let me see if I can find. This email here, I believe is it was an exhibit three. No. Uh, maybe. Give me a second. I'm looking for this. Okay, here we go. Okay, Ms. Sewell, this is exhibit B. And this is the email chain for this records request. Again, we can see I submitted my records request on October 31st. And we see here on December 13th, Good morning, Mr. McDonough. Attaches a responsive record to your nepotism policy. Then we scroll up and we see again on December 13th, on the same day, I write to you. Dear Elizabeth, I'm in receipt of the records you provided. However, sadly, even though you waited until after I was forced to sue you yet again before providing records, you still have not provided the requested records. What you provided is a copy of the 2000 the nepotism policy from 2011, I explicitly requested a copy of the nepotism policy from April 2006, a policy which Raymond DeJohn says was changed in April 2006 and allows for relatives to work for the same department. Please immediately provide the requested document or state that no such document exists. So after I was provided the first document, which was not responsive, I send this email. Would you agree that this email is complaining that all responsive documents had not been produced to you? You're complaining that you didn't get the, the, 20, the 2006 policy. That's what you're complaining about. Which was a responsive record to my request, correct? It's the policy. Okay. And then let's go up a little bit further. And this is on December 16th. Good afternoon, Mr. McDonough. Attached, please find ordinance number 20064-15. So would you agree that this responsive policy was produced after I complained that all records had not been provided to me? Is that correct? That policy was provided to you after you complained, yes. Okay, all right. See, that's not that difficult, Ms. Sewell. I don't know why you think I'm such a mean person. All right, let's move down to number six. 
It meant that it took less than five minutes of time to retrieve each of the first set and second set of records produced. The response is denied. Ms. Sewell, do you, can you estimate how long it would take to retrieve a simple nepotism policy when the month and year has been provided? Sir, it depends on the workload. Your public record request is not the only public record no, request we Ms. 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 Sewell, let, let me restate the question. I don't mean how long it'll take you to fully respond. What I'm asking is the second you sit down to your, wherever it is, to begin looking for this record, how long do you think it will retrieve the record? Not fully respond. How long do you think it would take to retrieve that I record? I do not know, Mr. McDonough. You do not know? No. Do you think it would be more than five minutes? I do not know, Mr. McDonough. So you have no idea of how long it would take to produce those records? No. Okay. But you swore in the interrogatories that it took more time. Is that correct? Or would you like me to show you the interrogatory where you say that? I do not recall, Mr. McDonald. All right, I'll show you. This is exhibit two. Let me scroll to the top so everybody can see here. This is the city of Homestead's answers and objections to plan's first set of interrogatories. The first interrogatory for each request for admission serve simultaneously with these interrogatories that you deny or provide a qualified admission. Please state all facts supporting such denial or qualified admission. As part of your answer, please identify all witnesses with knowledge and or documentation supporting your response. Now we were just reading from request for admission six. If we go down and we look at your answer, the second paragraph, request for admissions six, 10, and 14. It took longer than five minutes for the city to respond to each of plans request. Is that what that says? Yes, that's what's written there, yes. Okay, and I wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom. Ms. Sewell, is that your signature there on this document? Yes, yes it is. And so you're attesting and swearing under oath and had this document notarized, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So you swore under oath to this answer, but you just stated today that you have no idea how long it took? It was longer than five minutes, I'm sure. Just a second ago, Ms. Sewell, you said that you had no idea when I asked you if it was longer than five minutes. How can you be sure now? I'm looking at my answer. You're looking at your answer. Did you have any evidence that let you to believe that it took longer than five minutes to respond? Objection to form. Dr. McDonough, I've given you a, a good amount of leeway here. The, the, there's no dispute look, look, about- look, look, let me, let is, me is, look, look, the deposition let me is open to time to respond. This is a question we lay at the time to respond, sir. Let, let me, right. But there's no dispute about the date you made the request or the date that you received the records. You were not charged for the production, so the amount of time- That's that irrelevant. Took no, no, it, not, being charged is irrelevant, irrelevant to whether the delay was unlawful. The, those two are completely mutually exclusive, sir. I'm trying to determine the time it took to respond and why it took so much time to respond. Ms. Sewell, you're now saying you believe it would take more than five minutes. Being overly generous, what is the maximum amount of time that you think would be a reasonable amount of time not to comply with the request, but to retrieve this record once you start looking for the record? Jackson 10 minutes, form. 30 minutes, an hour? The record was not retrieved by me. It was retrieved by someone else. So Ms. Sewell, if I asked you directly, could you get me a copy of the April 2006 nepotism policy? Would you know how to find that record? The document was provided to me by someone else. Okay, Ms. Sewell. I didn't know this when I filed the request, but I've learned recently that the city uploads its records online with respect to the agenda minutes and meetings. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. And it was at the April 2006 meeting when the nepotism policy was enacted. Will we agree that that's correct? 
I was not here at the time, Mr. McDonough. Okay. So I do not know when it was enacted. So, so I did a test myself and I went on I, I, to see how long this would take me. This is the following steps I did. One, opening a web browser. Two, typing city of Homestead into Google. Three, pressing enter. Four, clicked on the link to the city's website. Five, scroll down to agenda in minutes. Six, click that button. Seven, click the 2006 agenda minutes folder. Eight, click the city council folder. Nine, clicked on the 2006-04-17 council agenda. Scroll to the beginning to see what tab number the nepotism policy was on. And 10, scroll down to tab 14 to find the nepotism policy. This total process took me less than three minutes. Would you doubt that, Ms. Sewell? Section to form. I don't know. Do you think it would take you or your assistants longer to retrieve the record than it took me to retrieve the record when I don't have access to the system? Section to form. Ms. Sewell? Section to, for, section to form calls for speculation. Ms. Ms. Sewell, how would you, how would such a record be retrieved? If you wanted to go find this record, how would you find this record? How would you go about retrieving it? I requested the record from the department where the record resides. And what department was that? I think this was, I, if I recall, it was the police department we requested it from. No, ma'am, the nepotism policy is not held in the police department. It's held on general city records. Are you saying that's a record that, are, are you saying that- I am, you, you asked me, you asked, but, you asked oh, me how the record was retrieved. I'm telling you how the record was retrieved. Okay, do you have any evidence that shows that the record was retrieved from the police department? Or is this an assumption? I would have to check the record to see. But that's Ms. what I recall. Ms. Sewell, is there any reason that you didn't provide any evidence to support the denials in the interrogatory? Section to form. Okay, let's go back to exhibit one. And let's come down to request for admission number eight. And this is now a question related to the second request. We're moved past the first request. Eight, admit that city failed to produce responsive records for six weeks. Response denied. Ms. Sewell, do you agree with that denial? What second records are we talking about? The second records request I filed was for copies of any emails to or from George Gretzis that related to nepotism. I agree with the denial. Okay. Let's come over here to exhibit C. Right here, we see an email. It's from Liz Palau. It's dated January 5th, 2021. Is that correct? Yes. And it's to me, and it says, good morning. Your request, PRR 343, has been received by the city's clerk's office on 1-4-21 and forwarded to the appropriate departments for processing. As soon as we receive a response from them, we will contact you. Then it states the PRR. Any emails to or from George Gretzis that mentioned nepotism, also I'm requesting it as a media question for someone within the city to answer the question of why the police department is in violation of state nepotism law, and if your criminal chief of police or apparently corrupt city manager plans to do anything about it. So this records request was filed on January 4th, 2021. Now I want to show you exhibit four. And 
and more is cloudiness. So this is sent on February the 17th. Good afternoon, C, please link below for responsive records pertaining to PRR 343. And you can see this goes back to the email we just showed you. And you can see this goes back to my records request from January 4th. So I filed my re request on 1421. Is that correct? According to the record here, yes. Okay. And according to the record here, the records were produced on February 17th, 2021, which is 217, 2021. Is that correct? According to what you have on the screen, yes. Do you have any reason to doubt that what I have on the screen is accurate? No. And, and you were copied on this email, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Let's pull up a calendar again and let's go to 2021. Oh, we jumped a little too far. Let me see if I can share this calendar with you. I'll stop sharing this and let's share the calendar now. Okay, Ms. Sewell, can you count for me how many weeks are between one, four, 21 and 217, 21? About four weeks, five weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six weeks. Yes. The answer is six weeks, correct? Yes. Okay. Let me bring it one back up again. So again, request for admission number eight, admit the city failed to produce responsive records for six weeks. Do you now disagree with that denial or do you still agree with that denial? Check the form. Ms. Sewell? I gave you my answer, Mr. McDonough. No, I'm asking you, now, since we've counted that it was six weeks, do you want to change your agreeance with the denial? Check the form. The record was provided to you, Mr. McDonough, when it was provided to the clerk's office. That's not the question, Ms. Sewell. That's my answer. Okay, let's go to request for admission number nine. Admit that city failed to produce responsive records until after the amending of the initial action to include the second request. Do you agree with that being denied as well? Yes. You do, okay. Let's go back to exhibit three. And let me scroll up to let's find where the case was amended at. This is the court docket for this case. Ms. Sewell, can you read the date that this case was amended? 2-16-2021. 2-16-2021. And we already agree that the records were provided to me on 2-17-2021. Is that correct? Yes. Does 216 come before or after 217? It comes before. It comes before. I, I agree with you, Ms. Sewell. So if I amend it on 216, which comes before 217, the day you gave me the records, request for admission number nine, admit the city failed to produce responsive records until after the amending of the instant action to include the second request, that denial would be improper. Is that correct? Check to form. We provided you the record when we received the record, Mr. McDonough. But the record <laughs> was provided, but the record, we agree the record was provided to me after I amended the lawsuit. Is that correct?
I answered you. No, no, you do not answer that question. Ms. Sewell, was the lawsuit filed before or after the records were produced? Check the form. Ms. Sewell. Yes, sir. Were the records produced before or after I amended the lawsuit? The record was provided to you on the 17th. Which is after the 16th when I amended the lawsuit. Is that correct? I answered you, Mr. McDonough. All right, let's get down to request number 12. Request number 12, admit that city took more than three months to produce the first set of responsive records to McDonough. And again, I wanna note, this is for the third request now, which was the request for all records related to any investigation done on me by Detective Ricky Rivera. Do you agree with denying that it was more than three months before the records were produced here? The records was produced to you, Mr. McDonough. Not the record, Ms. Sewell. I had got a motion to compel from the judge in this case, and he specifically commanded that the witnesses be compelled to answer my questions related to the timing of my request and the responses therein. Is that correct, Mr. Zeskine? Dr. McDonough, why don't you show her the request you're referring to? All right, let me show you exhibit number five. You can see this request was sent by me on Thursday, June 11th, 2020. It was sent to you, Ms. Sewell, as well as the mayor, council manager, and other assistant attorneys. The records request, dear Elizabeth, I hereby file a request for public records under FS 119. I'm requesting immediate personal inspection of all materials, which is our public record related to any investigation done on me by R. Rivera. Please let me know what time I can come and inspect these records. Also, if there are any records from the secret meeting held by roll with multiple council persons present discussing me, I would like to inspect those too. Ms. Sewell, did you ever provide me with a chance to inspect these records? When did you file this? I'm sorry, I could not hear you. I'm asking when you filed it, Dr. Okay. Uh, this was filed on June 11, 2020. Okay, so this was in the height of the pandemic, okay? City Hall was closed to people coming in and the public coming in and out of the City Hall as a result of the pandemic. Okay, did, did you, since we say that it's courteous to respond to people, did you ever respond and tell me I could not inspect because of the pandemic? Check the form. Did Dr. McDonough, Dr. McDonough, is it your position you haven't received those records? Uh, we've already discussed and we established at the deposition this morning there's records that haven't been produced to me, did we not? Okay, so let's move up here a little bit. And we can see here, good morning, Mr. McDonough, your request were received by the clerk's office on 6-11. As soon as we receive a response from HVD, we'll contact you. So you're acknowledging the request on June 12th, the day after I filed it, which I think is proper. Let's go over to exhibit six. One second, let's see this here. Okay, give me just a second, I'm sorry. All right.
Okay. So we see here, Julissa Chavez is responding to me on September 18th, 2021. Is that correct? According to what you have on the screen. 2020, I'm sorry, 2020. And it says, greetings from the clerk's office. Request ID PRR PD 0256, total 71 PDF files. Can you the scroll? File, I'm sorry, sorry, can you scroll down? I, I didn't see the whole exhibit. Can you scroll down? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I scrolled through it several times, but this is, this is an email chain. This is the email chain from when I initially filed a request until I get this response. And there's two Dropbox links there, correct? Yes. Okay. Now let me see if I can share the calendar again. Um, so let me stop sharing this. Okay. And we're now in 2020. Ms. Sewell. Can you go from 611 to 911 and tell me how many months that is? Three. That is three months. So from 611 to 911 is three months, correct? According to the calendar. And from 611, or excuse me, from, um, I was going to say, give me just a second. And from 9-11 to 9-18, is that a week? Yes. So would you agree that it took three months and one week to produce this set of records? Objection to form mischaracterizes what's reflected on the exhibit. Um, the exhibit was shows the records request was filed on 6-11 and it was responded to on 9-18. What, 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 what's not reflected in the record here, Mr. Johnson? I believe you skipped over an email. Oh yeah, oh, you wanna see all the, oh, I'm sorry. You can look at all the emails if you'd like. That is absolutely fine. I don't wanna hide anything from you and this exhibit will be filed as um, with the transcript. Let me get this up. Let's back up. Like we're on top ah, our time to see We're at exhibit six. All right. So this is an email to me on September 18th. I sent an email to Julissa on September 16th, telling her that PDF and sent my Dropbox is fine. She had emailed me earlier on the 16th saying, hello, Mr. McDonough, no problem. I need to convert these files to PDFs and have some of those attachments once finished, I'll put them in a Dropbox. Earlier, you can see on the 16th, I replied to her, these files are not open, please provide them another way. And this is another one. Good morning, Dr. McDonough. Here's your records request. It's from September 3rd, but it was an unworking link. So the responsive records weren't produced then. I did not get the responsive records till the 18th. Are, are you caught up now, Mr. Zeskine? Yeah, I've seen I've seen the the full exhibit now. Okay. And we agree that it was three months in one week between June 11th when I filed the request. In September 18th, when the responsive records, the first set of responsive records were produced to me. Is that correct, Ms. Sewell? We tried to provide them to you on the 2nd of September, according to this email here in front of me. Yeah, you attempted to, but you did not. If I'm given an unworking link, that's not producing the records, is it? Object to form. Ms. Sewell? All right, let's, let's go back to exhibit one, the request for admissions. 12, admit the city took more than three months to produce the first set of responsive records to McDonough. 
denied. Ms. Sewell, do you agree that three week, three months and one week is a longer period of time than three months? Well, we attempted to, to provide them to you on September 2nd, which is less than three months. But you did not. Technically, we tried. And no, so, so, let, me, let me stop you, Ms. Sewell. So you're now testifying today that you had tried to produce them to me on the third, which would have been slightly less than three months. Is that the reason that this number 12 was denied? Objection. She's, she's provided no testimony that says she's the one that prepared these responses. You're, so you're asking her to tell, to give wait, you a wait, reason. Well, you're asking her to I'll, give I'll, you the I'll reason. Say, I'll, I'll say, Mr. Zuckstein. No, 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 no. Let, let, no, no, let no. Me, no. Let's let go right finish. over the interrogatory. She swore to these, sir. She swore to these in this case, sir. She can't Correct. back I'll, out of that now. Uh, no one is saying that. You, I'm responding that you're asking her the reason why a request for admission was denied. If you want to talk about the, the facts as they relate to the interrogatory response, that's fine. You're asking the basis on the request for admission. I'm just saying you haven't established that she would be okay. aware necessarily of right. the- This is request 12. I, I want to look at the answer to the first interrogatory. It's for response for admissions 2, 3, 8, 9, 12, 13, and 15. Let me highlight this if it'll highlight, uh, it won't let me highlight it all, but you, you see the paragraph that's highlighted, Ms. Sewell? The one that you're attempting to highlight? No, I'm attempting to yeah. highlight. I'm sorry that I'm incompetent. Yeah, I see it. Can you read that paragraph for me? The city has produced all responsive records to plaintiff. Continue. The, the, city the, whole, the whole paragraph, not the sentence. Oh, you oh, I said you paragraph. Know. Oh, the city did not fail to comply with the requirements of chapter 119 in, responsing, in responding to the plaintiff's request. And you swore to this under oath. Mr. McDonald, the city clerk's office has provided to you all the records. Ms. Sewell, that's not the question I'm asking. So that's the answer if, I'm going if, to give Ms. you Ms. Sewell, that's if you what I can. my questions today, you're going to answer them in front of the judge. Now, I think it'd be much easier for you to answer them in front of me today. Well, I'm telling you that we did provide everything that was provided to the clerk's office. Okay, okay. But that's and not that's the, the reason why you have that answer. Ms. Sewell, it says the city has produced all responsive records to plaintiff. This morning, in an earlier deposition, we established there's at least four sets of records that have not been produced to me that are responsive and that exist. At least Objection. four. Objection to form mischaracterizes the testimony from this morning. Mr. McDonough, the city clerk's office has provided to you everything that has been provided to the city clerk's office. Thank, thank you for that answer, Ms. Sewell. I understand that answer and I appreciate it. I'm now asking you a different question. Everything that was given to you in your office, you gave to me. That's not the question. The question is, it says, the city has produced all responsive records to plaintiff. We're now aware there's at least four sets of records that were not produced to me. I don't. Are know you standing that. by your sworn statement here? Yes, I am. Objection you are. Form mischaracterizes. Miss Sewell, how could you have personal knowledge to know that all records possessed by the city of Homestead have been provided to me? I can only testify to what was provided to the clerk's office and provided to you. But you testified to more than that, correct? No. Objection to form. No, 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 Mr. Mr. Sewell, you didn't say all records given to me or the clerk's office was given to McDonough. You said the city has produced all responsive documents to plaintiff. I'm telling you right now, that statement is patently false. You're going to stand behind a patently false statement and swear to it today? Objection to form. Office, that's what I'm doing. Yes. From the clerk's office, we gave you everything we have. Not from the clerk's office. I'm saying from the city of Homestead. Do you have any direct knowledge that all records in possession of the city of Homestead have been produced to me. Objection to form. No, Ms. Sewell, yes or no? Do you have any direct knowledge that all records in possession of the city of Homestead have been produced to me? Everything the clerk's office has have been provided. Ms. Sewell, that's not the question. It's a yes that's or no my question. Answer. I'm not, I, Ms. Sewell, you have not answered my question. I'm not moving forward to you answer it. Yes or that's no? That's my answer. That's my answer. 
whatever the city clerk's office had, that's what we provided to you. What Everything knowledge? Do, what knowledge? Them. What knowledge do you have to support your sworn statement that the city has produced all responsive records to? Do you have any knowledge? Do you have any evidence to prove this? Everything that was provided to the city clerk's office was provided to you. Do you have any evidence to support your allegation you made, Ms. Sewell? I have not made any allegation. Everything yes, that you was did. provided- Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Ms. Sewell. This is a clear allegation. The city had produced all responsive records to plaintiff. Are you saying that's not an allegation? Object to form that she's answered your question. No, she hasn't, Mr. Deskine. She absolutely hasn't. You're smart enough to know she hasn't. I know you don't want her to answer the question because it'll show the city broke the law. I get that. But she needs to answer the question regardless. I'm answering the question and I'm answering it according to the knowledge I have. The it's city a yes clerk's no office question. has provided everything that you have, that we were given to you. Do you have any direct knowledge that the city has produced to me all responsive records? Check the form. Do you have knowledge? Not what the city did. Do you have knowledge, Ms. Sewell? We provided everything to you that was provided. Ms. Sewell, do you have any knowledge of this? The knowledge I have is everything that was provided to the clerk's office was provided to you. But your statement is broader than that, correct? My statement is what I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying to I'm, you. I'm saying your statement in the interrogatories that you swore to in writing under oath. Mr. McDonough, your, your statement doesn't say everything given to the city clerk's office was given to me. It says city gave me everything. There's two different things, Ms. Sewell. Do you understand the nuance? I, I answered you, Mr. McDonough. That's my answer. Go back to exhibit one. Okay, let's look at request for admission 13. Admit that city did not produce the second set of responsive documents until six months after the third request was filed. Do you agree with that denial? Ms. Sewell, I can't see your face. Could you please look into the camera for us? While I'm you're... looking into the camera. I'm sitting in front of the camera. What's the no, problem? No, no, you're not. You're, you're, the camera only has the top of your head and it's your silhouette from the side, Ms. Sewell. You're not facing the camera. This is a video deposition. Um, Monica, could you come and testify that I'm, stand, I'm sitting in front of a camera? No Sewell, one else, Elizabeth, no one else should come into the room. Ms. Sewell, can you well, see your I'm screen? I'm sitting here in front of the camera. What can does he want see? me to do? Can, can, Jump on I, top of it. I, I want you to remain facing the camera while we're while you're answering my questions, Miss Sewell. You're looking at the, the camera. I am facing the camera. You're Elizabeth, facing now. Can, can you, you turn the camera down so I can see you, please? Elizabeth, can you turn the tilt the camera down? So there you go. It's not going to stay down. Where it's, it's oh my god. Is that better? That's better. That's better. Okay. Ms. Sewell, you're not looking at the camera. OMG, we're gonna do this all evening? Ms. Sewell, this is a video deposition. The, the purpose of this is not only to capture your testimony, but also capture your facial expressions and body language so we can help uh, gauge the credibility of your responses here today, which with all due respect, isn't that great? Um, Move so, to strike. Strike it, that's fine. I withdraw. So, Request for admission 13 says, admit the city did not produce the second set of responsive documents until six months after the third request was filed. And that's denied. Let's look at exhibit seven. Can you state the date that this email was sent to me by Julissa Chavez? December 11, 2020. Okay. And it says, According to what you have on the screen. And, and Julissa Chavez copied you to this, correct? According to what you have on the screen, yes. 
do you have any reason to believe that this is not the email she sent to me and copies you on? I don't know. Would you like to check your email to see if you got this email and has the same email? Or are you gonna agree that this is uh, the email? Section the form. Okay, so good afternoon, Dr. McDonough. PRRPD 0256 and PRRPD 0420. Response to records emailed on 918. See attached. If you encounter a problem, you may access blah, blah, blah. Then it has a link below the link. Below, there are additional records to your request. The file size is too large to email as an attachment. Please access the records from the below link. Would you agree that I'm now being given a second set of responsive records? to my third request. According to your email, yes. Do you have any reason to doubt that? I answered your question. And I asked you if you had any reason to doubt that this email is incorrect. Okay. All right, and we established that this records request was filed on 6-11-2020, correct? I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll scroll down so you can see it. I'll, I'll find it. Oh, let's see here. We agree. This is June 11th, 2020. This is the records request. I mean, June 11th. June 11th, 2020 is my father request, correct? Yes, in the middle of the pandemic, yes. Yes, in the middle of the pandemic, I, I, I know. And this second set of records is being given to me on December the 11th, is that correct? Yes. Okay, let me see if I can share the calendar uh, again. Ms. Sewell, can you count how many months are between June 11th and December 11th for us? Six. Six, we agree it's six months, correct? According to the calendar. Do you have a reason to doubt the calendar? Can you count the months from June to December without a calendar? You asked the question. Well, let's, I let's, asked let's, it. let's do That's it. That's my answer. Let's, let's just do this a quick, quick little experiment here. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's six, right? We don't even need a calendar. Ms. Sewell, why are you questioning the validity of a calendar? Check to form the, the mischaracterizing her testimony. She didn't. I didn't. I didn't question, question anything. You, you said the calendar is correct. So did you That's have to believe the calendar was incorrect? I think she said according I, to the according calendar. According to the calendar. That's what I said. That was okay. my, okay. that word, okay. stop twisting my words. Huh. <laughs> That's funny. Is that kind of like when you twisted my words, when you said that I was being aggressive, when I politely requested the invoices and why I was being overbilled, which I Section did on the form, form. Move to strike. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's go back to exhibit one here. So Ms. Sewell, request for admission 13, admit the city did not produce a second set of responsive documents until six months after the third request was filed. We agree that it was six months before I got the, those records, the second set. Yes? The city clerk produced it to you when they got it. I don't care when they got it, it was six months, correct? According to the calendar. Okay. Let's move on to request 15. Admit that the city did not produce the second set of records until after McDonough complained that not all responsive records have been produced. Deny. Do you agree with that denial, Ms. Sewell?
Ms. Sewell, do you agree with that denial? Yes. You do, okay. Let's look at exhibit seven again. Okay, so we can see why I get the second set of records on December 11th. On December 10th, I sent an email. Dear Elizabeth, is there a reason this request is not being properly handled by the city? This response is months old now with no reply. Can I assume from the lack of response that Homestead has no records of the investigation done only by Ricky Rivera? And also, I mean, blah, 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 I don't need to go on. You agree that I'm complaining the records haven't been given to me here in this email, correct? Yes. Okay, let's go down a little bit earlier. October 4th, dear Elizabeth, I hope you're well. Previously, I filed a request for all records related to an investigation done on me by Ricky Rivera. All that was provided was some emails showing that Rivera was trading favors, possibly unlawfully with a special agent for the OIG for the Department of Commerce, attempting to get me in trouble with my job. I didn't realize that was part of the function of HPD, but I digress. All that was provided was emails. If there was any investigation, wouldn't there be something more than just a few emails between Rivera and the OIG? Can I get all the records, documents, ad infinitum related to any investigation done on me by Ricky Rivera, including any incident investigation numbers or reports, whatever terminology he uses, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to go on. Would you agree that's another email I sent you complaining that all records had not been provided to you? According to what you have here, yes. And October 4th is more than two months before December 11th, right? Okay, Mr. McDonough, I do not know how they process public records requests in the police department. This well, record, no, request, this question this here, record request was sent. This record, could I explain myself or? Sure, go ahead, please. Okay. This record request was sent in the middle of a pandemic. We were trying to figure out how to keep the city's operations going forward, okay? I'm not sure how the police department handles their public records requests over there, but whatever was given to the clerk's office, whenever it was given to the clerk's office was provided to you, Mr. McDonough. That's all that I can testify to. So we agree that's all you can testify to, and you cannot testify to the fact the city has given me all records that's responsive in their possession, correct? Everything that was provided to the clerk's no, office. No, Ms. 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 Sewell, come on. You're being so evasive here. This is really simple. Mr. McDonough, I am, I, I am answering according to the knowledge I have. You just said that you could only testify that all records given to you were given to me, which I thank you for and I agree with. Do you also agree with me that you can't testify that all records that the city has were given to me because you would have no knowledge. As you just said, you don't know the police department records. I don't. So you could not testify that they gave me all their records. Is that correct? I can testify that what they gave me, you got. Can you testify that the department, the police department gave me, gave you all the records? I can testify to whatever they gave me, you got. Can you testify that they gave you all the records? I think the answer should be no, Ms. Sewell. If the answer is not no, please provide any knowledge that you have that would support. Elizabeth, just answer the question. You can either testify no. to- No, I cannot. No, you cannot. Okay, so we admit that you swearing under oath in the interrogatories that all records responsive the city had produced you could from not swear that because you have no knowledge. No, obje objection to form mischaracterizes it. And, and yes. when she signs when she signs interrogatories in the capacity as a city clerk, as a representative of the city, as, as a corporate representative, just like under the rules of civil procedure, when a corporate representative testifies on behalf of a corporation or government agency. So she's test she's what but aren't they only supposed to testify to things that they have knowledge of? When you're when a witness appears as a corporate representative, as Ms. Sewell was when she's signing the interrogatories, that's based on knowledge within the city. 
not only, not only, not only, Mr. Zesman, not, here's the problem. Not only, here's the problem with not your only uncooperative, not. your completely unresponsive response to my request for discovery. Had move to move to compel. Produced, or had a witness been named, we could talk to him. But nobody was named. No evidence was provided. No witness was named. So I have to assume the only witness is Ms. Sewell. Ms. Sewell, are there any other witnesses that would have knowledge of this so we could find this out? This lawsuit's been going on for nearly two years now. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. We provided, first of all, we provided a witness list in this case. You've taken depositions of other witnesses in this case. So that, that's not a fair characterization, but she's given you the answer. You can move on. Okay, fair enough. Ms. Sewell. Do you dis? I mean, or let's go back to fifteen real quick. Ms. Sewell, do you uh, disagree that I was not provided all responsive documents in the first production? Everything that was provided to the clerk's office, Mr. McDonough, was provided to you. And the clerk's office provided me with sets of documents two separate times. Is that correct? Yes. That were months apart. Is that correct? Yes. So is it accurate to characterize and say the first production of records did not produce all responsive records? Is that correct? Everything that was provided to the clerk's office was provided to you. All right, back to request for admission number 15. Admit the city did not produce the second set of records until after McDonough complained that not all responsive records have been produced. We've established that I complained at least twice that not all records have been produced before the second set was provided to me, correct? Everything that was provided to the clerk's office was provided to you. Counselor, can you help me here? I, I understand you don't want to help me, but like you realize this is not the question I'm asking. Ms. Sewell, if you don't answer the question here, you're going to have to answer the question in court in front of the judge. I don't think the judge is going to appreciate your evasiveness. Just, just ask her the, you, you've done it with every other one. Just ask the, the facts, the, the dates. I have. She refuses to answer. She continues to say all records given to me were given to you on yes or no questions. They're completely unrelated. It's like, Miss Sewell, are you a female? All records given to me were given to you. Miss Sewell, are you alive? All records given to me were given to you. Miss Sewell, did you come to work today? All, like, come on. This is, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous, Miss Sewell. Objection moved to strike. Do you disagree that I was not provided all the records in the first set of records? Set to form. As you asked for more records, more records were provided to you. I asked for more records because all responsive records had not been produced to me at, at that point. Is that correct? Set to form. As you asked for more records, the records were provided to you. but the city refused to produce all responsive records in the first set of records it produced. Is that correct? Back to form. I have answered you, Mr. McDonald. This is another question. You have not answered this. As you asked for specific records, as you became more specific in your record request, the records were provided to you. But all record, no, 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 no. I did not get more specific in my records request. That records request was not modified or clarified. Ms. Sewell, is your testimony here today that I modified and clarified that request, the third request? As you complained, you got more records. That's I my, complained that's because my all testimony. records have been given to me. Ms. No, Sewell, I Ms. Sewell. Why do you keep turning away from the camera? Is Mr. Zeskind coaching you? Mr. Jess ain't coaching me. I am sitting here in front of the computer. There's nobody coaching me. Just, just like the last you deposition, you proof? continue to turn like 90 to 100 degrees off. Because that's continue. the way I usually, I'm sitting in my chair. What do you want me to do? Take the chair and change my whole thing because of you? Or move your camera. Listen, I don't care. I mean, we're here I've for moved a the camera. Deposition. I've moved the camera several times. I'm not moving the camera anymore. Why are you, you being so hostile? Me. Why are you so hostile, Ms. Sewell? Because Section I am tired of right. you badgering me. You are badgering me, sir. 
Because you're not answering simple questions, Miss Seward. Because I am answering, you just don't like my answers. That's the answer. That's it. That's what well, you want a, a lot of my questions are yes or no answers, and you're refusing to give a but yes I'm or no answer. I'm not answering yes or no. I am answering the way I know to answer. Maybe I'm not educated enough, but that's the way I'm going to answer you. Sorry. Okay. Let's go back over to exhibit two. This is the interrogatories. Did you help prepare this document, Ms. Sewell? I signed it. Did you help prepare it? I signed it. Did you read it thoroughly before you signed it? I signed it. Did you read it before you signed it, Ms. Sewell? Elizabeth, you can answer the question. Yes. Yes. Did you read it thoroughly before you signed it? Check to form. I answered you. Do you think that you understood everything that it was saying before you signed it? I answered you. I read it. Do you have any personal knowledge with respect to each and every interrogatory? Objective form, we already discussed this. She signed it as a corporate representative on behalf of the city, which does not require personal knowledge. Doesn't, okay, so you have no personal knowledge. That's correct. Ms. Sewell, if you have personal knowledge, just say, yes, I have personal knowledge. If you don't, say no. It's simple. Yes or no? For which question? For each and every one of the questions. I mean, is there a specific question that you have knowledge of and others you don't? What questions... What interrogatories do you have personal knowledge of, Ms. Sewell? Maybe that's a better way to state that. I signed it, Mr. McDonough. Do you have personal knowledge of any of the statements made in the interrogatories? You're only showing her one interrogatory. At the okay, moment. that's one. Okay, Let, let's scroll down here. Let's go to interrogatory number six. This one's a doozy. Can you read the dep uh, number six for us, Ms. Sewell? What justification does city have for the delay seen in the three requests at bar? As part of your answer, plainly identify all witnesses with knowledge and or documentation supporting your response. And can you read the answer? The city objects to the request as it lacks foundation and predicate in that it assumes that there was an unreasonable delay in the production of records, which there was not. The city further objects to the request as it seeks information that is irrelevant and not reasonably calculated to lead to the discovery of admissible evidence. All records responsive to each of the three requests identified in the amended complaint have been produced to plaintiff. Plaintiff did not provide the city statutorial, statutorial designated record custodian with the required written re notice at least five days in advance of filing the complaint. Plaintiff thereof cannot be entitled to recover costs as such. This matter is moot. Do you understand what you just read? I read Action. it. You read it, okay. So let's go with the first sentence. The city objects to this request as it lacks foundation and predicate. Uh, and that objection. This is a, this is that's a legal objection prepared by counsel. You're not going to discuss it with the witness. I'm here to provide you legal. So, so, so there's nobody for me to discuss this with, even though Miss Sewell signed these. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Zeskine? No one said that. You're about to ask her about lacking foundation and predicate. That's a legal objection prepared by counsel. Let me finish my question, sir. The first sentence says the city objects to this request as it lacks foundation and predicate in that it assumes that there was an unreasonable delay in the production of records, which there was not. Is there anything in the sixth interrogatory that suggests the delay was unlawful? I'm confused. Objection to form. Okay. Interrogatory six says, what justification does the city have for the delays seen in the three requests at bar? Dr. McDonough, if you have a problem with the way the discovery responses were responded to, move to compel. I compelling her deposition. That's how I'm dealing with this. 
It says, what justification does the city have for the delays seen in the three requests at bar? The first sentence is city objects as this request as it lacks foundation and predicate and that it assumes there was an unreasonable delay in the production of records, which there was not. Would part of the sixth interrogatory assumes that the delay was unreasonable? Objection again. <laughs> Miss Sewell, you're asking. You're asking. Let, 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 let me explain this. I'm, 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 I'm not an attorney. A response to a legal now, objection. Let me teach you a little about public records law, since you don't seem to understand it, Miss Sewell. Objection. Any strike. time it takes, more than a nanosecond to produce records is the delay. Period. Bar none. <laughs> Move the strike. Bar none. Not, an Bar none. That, that, not that's a characterization. A of if, if if the delay can be justified, it's law. reasonable and lawful. If the delay can't be justified, it's unreasonable and unlawful. Dr. McDonough, make that argument to the judge. If you'd like, this is not the appropriate venue. Miss Sewell, Miss Sewell, do you have <laughs> any- strike that, that soliloquy. Do you have any justification for the delay seen in any of the three requests at bar? Mr. McDonough, as the records request, the record, the responsive records were provided to the clerk's office, they were provided to you. So there's no delay on my part. I'm not saying there's a delay on your part. Okay. I'm saying there was a delay in the time that I filed my records request and the time that my records were received. If the city cannot provide a justification, I believe the delay was unreasonable and unlawful. The case law is very clear on this point. So you say that I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, really easily tell me what the justification for the delays are. I do not know. Because so you I have do no not work in the police delay. department. Do, I do, do not agree? work in the police department, sir. Do we agree that you have no justification for the delay? No, I do not I agree with you. Okay, if you don't agree with me that you have no justification for the delay, please provide the justification. Your public That's record request is voluminous. They are not the only records requests received in the police department. I am absolutely sure of that. And I do not know how long it takes them to process their public records request. I do know that when it was provided to the clerk's office, they were provided to you. There was no delay in the clerk's office. Okay, that, that, I, I understand that. I understand that you're saying there was no delay in the clerk's office. And not all the records came from the police department. So let's not confuse that either. Can you, do you have any justification which you can provide for the delays in any of the three requests, Ms. Sewell? Which three requests, Mr. McDonough? The first request, the second request, and the third request. The first request was asking for the April 2006 nepotism policy. The second request was asking for emails to or from George Gretzis related to nepotism. The third request was any records related to the investigation done on me by Ricky Rivera. Okay, in regards to the nepotism policy, I explained to you that you provide, you sent that record request when we were in the middle of a very contentious election, which you, are very aware of because you were part of the acceleration of the contention in that election. Okay. Oh, can, you, can you explain the acceleration of the contention? What do you mean by that, Ms. Sewell? You know, that was a very contentious election and it took everything I had to, to get through that election. So that was part of the delay probably in your request for the nepotism policy. Are, are you blaming that on me, Ms. Sewell? I'm not blaming you. That's not a mischaracterization of her testimony. I'm, I'm, Again, you're I'm twisting my words. Question. Again, you are twisting my words. I I'm not twisting words. I'm you. asking you. I'm asking you. It's yes or no. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're twisting me as, as usual. You're twisting what I said as usual. I am saying to you that was part of the delay because I was busy dealing with the election. Now, in regards to George's emails, we sent those to the ITS department and wherever else they may have been, when we got the responses back, we sent them to you. In regards to Ricky Rivera, that went to the police department. When they provided us the record, that came to you. We provide you the records as we receive the records, sir. Okay, Ms. Sewell, my first request was filed on October 31st. Two days before the election. The, the yep. General and, and, election. And, and what day was the election over? 
No, I'm saying the federal election. Or the, the federal the election, election is, is the, never. The, the election is not over on election day. There is certification. There is an audit. There is uh, swearing in of all the officers, sir. That doesn't end on election day. What makes you think that ends on election day? I'm the work saying, continues. When, when does it end, Miss Stewell? Probably by the end of November. By the end of November. Yes. And so then there's other work to be done. I am not, public records is not the only thing we do in here. Well, that's As not my problem. As we established at the beginning I, of not, my testimony. It, it's not my I know problem, it's not your problem that you can't keep up with your work, Ms. Sewell. That, that's I, actually move to strike. I understand. I, I, I mean, everybody's got deadlines. I got deadlines too. And I, I don't get to blame them on other things. Um, I understand. Move to strike. So, Ms. Sewell, so you, so you would say that by November 30th, everything with the election was over? No, I wouldn't say everything was over. You, you just say, stated a minute ago was your testimony that by the end of November. I said by the end of the month, some, most of everything is over, yes, but there's work to, other work to be done, Mr. McDonough. That's what I said. Uh, I, I disagree with that, but anyway, we'll move along. Um, of course um, you disagree, you know everything. You must know it all. That's not true. Elizabeth, <laughs> just answer, Elizabeth. Just answer his questions, and we don't need any other any other statements. Okay. So, you stated a minute ago that the election would have basically been over by the end of November. Are you now changing that testimony, Miss Sewell? I did I'm, not. I'm say confused. That You've given conflicting done. testimony. I said here. most of the work. I said most of the work. I didn't say all of the work. I, I'm not changing my testimony. Would you please stop twisting my words? I'm not. You're giving conflicting statements. I am not. Yes, you I are. have said it. I have said it that most of the work is done by the end of the month. And, and would but you... I continue to do other work. And I said public records is not all that I do in this department. Okay. That's my statement. Okay. So are, are you? I, I don't want to twist your words. So I'm asking you a question. If, if I'm incorrect, let me know that I'm incorrect. So are you alleging that you weren't going to work on any records requests until after the election stuff was no, all? No, I didn't complete? say that. I didn't say that, but no, your, I mean, public your justification for why not producing your the record public school. record request is not the only request I receive. They are processed in the order received. It, do you know why the city failed to provide justifications for the delays? Objection to form. I am providing you justification right now. Not so hypothetical. The, not, not hypothetical, maybe specific factual based justifications for each of the three requests. Mr. McDonough, I Jackson, have she answered your question. You keep badgering me. I answered you. You're not answering my questions, Ms. Sewell. It's not the answers you like, but it's the answers. So what is the just what's the justification for the second request, the delay there? I told you. It was processed by another department. I do not know. But you agree that no justification was provided in my interrogatories where I specifically requested the city to produce their justification. I don't agree with you. You don't agree with me. Okay. No, I don't. All right. That's fine. Let me, let me pull up. Let me, let's go back to the interrogatory. What justification does the city have for the delays seen in the three requests at bar? Ms. Sewell, in your answer, can you show me where the justification for the delays is present because I can't find it. Objection to form. Again, they're the city's answers. They're not her answers. Okay, they're the city's answers, but would you agree that the city has not provided a justification for any of the three delays in that answer? I do not agree with you. You do not agree with me. Well, can you tell me where the justification is in the answer? Because I don't see it. If it's there and you disagree, you should be able to point it out really easy, Ms. Sewell. I don't agree. Okay, well, what sentence or part of the answer uh, provides justification for the delays? I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing. There you go. Ms. Sewell, just... Interrogatory number six, the just, what justifications does the city have for the delays seen in the three requests at bar? That was my sixth interrogatory. Your answer, can you, do you see anything in that answer 
that provides justification for the delay seen in the three requests. It says that the records were provided to you. But all records haven't been provided to me. We've already gone over this. Ms. Sewell, it's already been established that not all records responsive to my requests have been provided. From my, my, from my point of view, they were. From the clerk's office, they were. So regardless of what reality really is, whatever you want reality to be, that's what the truth is, Ms. Sewell? No, Objection whatever form. the clerk's office has done is what my reality is. Okay. And you being the clerk, I'm assuming as part of the clerk's office, signed this interrogatory. I'm simply, and you said that you read it. I'm simply asking you if you can show me where at in your answer is a justification provided for the delays in the three requests. Objection to form again, this answer is a legal objection. It's not. Well, right, well, not let me ask you, Mr. Zeskind, do you agree that there's no justification provided for the three requests in the answer? You were provided with a legal objection to the interrogatory. Have I ever been provided any justification for the delays in my request? Mr. Sewell or Mr. Zeskind, I don't care. Can anybody provide me a justification for the delays? I'm a, since you're not answering, I'm going to go ahead and say the answer is no. Objection to form, move to strike. Just ask the just ask the specific I, I question. I asked the question. The She's refusing to answer, Mr. No, because you, because I've, I, I've I've made it clear you're asking her to give you an explanation for a legal objection. I'm not asking her to explain a legal objection. No, no, Mr. Zeskind, you are mischaracterizing what I'm saying. That is not what's happened. I'm not asking her to explain your retarded objections that if any lawyer ever saw, they'd probably take your bar card away. What I'm asking her for is to say if she sees any objections in that answer. Right, and what, and what I, that's precisely what I just said because you keep asking her about- Because she hasn't a legal, said it. A legal objection, ask her, you can ask her factually about the specific requests and the response. That's not what you're asking. You're asking for her to explain or, 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 Ms. Sewell, a legal objection to an Ms. Sewell, interrupt. specifically for the second request, what is the justification for the six-week delay in producing the records? And which, which request is that one? Which is All second? emails to or from George Gretzis related to nepotism. The record was provided by the ITS department to us and we provided it to you, the date that's that not, it was provided to you. With I do respect, not know, I, I have told you this before. I that is not a justification for the delay, Ms. Sewell. Ms. Sewell, that is not a justification for the delay. Just say you have no justification for the delay if you have no justification for the delay, Ms. Sewell. This is not that hard. Uh, objection, she she told you she, does, so she, told you she doesn't know the reason why it took IT the amount of, the amount of time to provide the record. She's told you that. Okay, already All right, so I, I want to make sure that we're clear on the record. Ms. Sewell, your attorney just stated that you claimed on the record that you have no justification. We're going with that's, that. We'll no, that, that's no, not. That's exactly what you just said, sir. That's not what I said. That's a mischaracterization. We'll move that's on. We'll move on. what we said. You twisted everything. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. That, yes. <laughs> that's a mischaracterization both of my statement and part of my objection where she's already answered your question and a mischaracterization of her testimony. You said that she already stated that she had no justification. That's not I what I said. I don't I don't I mean, what did you, what did you say, Mr. Zeskine? I said that she's already responded to you that she is not aware of the reason why it took the amount of time that it did for IT to provide the records to the city's clerk so they could be provided to you. I did not say so, that so, she so, has so, no so now would you agree, based on deductive logic, with a statement you just made, that she has no justification for the delay. If she doesn't know why they delayed, she has no justification for the delay. It's really no. simple. <laughs> those are two. It's not mischaracterization. Things. It's simple deductive it logic. Is. Those are it two. Is. Those are those are two different, two different things. things. Yes. Yes, it's two different things. No, no justification and not having factual knowledge, firsthand knowledge to respond to your question are, are not the same thing. Mr. Zeskind, this lawsuit was filed in 2019. Why is the city not to date provided any justification for the delays? Dr. McDonough, I'm not here to answer your questions. Ms. Sue, are you aware of any justification for delay in any of the three requests that the city has? Personal knowledge, 
fact specific, not maybe it was this, maybe it was that. Do you have any specific objection? Or objection to form. I can only speak from the city clerk's office. Okay. With the first and the second requests, all responsive records were not produced to me in the first response. Is there any justification for the delay in not producing me all responsive records the first time? Section to form. As we understood your public record request, we provided you the records. Okay. All right, let's, let's move along. You're not being cooperative. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it later. I, I want to I look at another sentence that is in this answer. I don't know why this is not highlighting. We're doing all funny. Anyway. Let's see, I'll read it. Plaintiff did not provide the city's statutorily designated records custodian with the required written notice at least five days in advance of filing the complaint. You agree it states that? According to what's on the screen here, yes. Okay. And we've established that the first request was filed on October 31st, 2019 and the city responded providing a responsive document on December 16th, 2019. And we established that was six weeks of time, correct? Yes. Ms. Sewell, is there more or less than five business days in a six week period? <laughs> There's more. You believe there is more? Are you aware of any week that doesn't have a single business day therein? Weeks with holidays, yes. You, you know a week that the whole week is a holiday? There's not a single no. business day? Listen, you, you said a single business day in a week. No, I, 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 I'm going to restate it. Maybe I misspoke. Are you aware of any week that does not have at least one single business day therein? No. You're not. Me neither. Would you agree that six is more than five? Yes. Would you agree that a week is more than a day? Yeah. So would you agree that I gave five business days in advance notice before I filed my complaint? No. You no, did you not. Wouldn't. No, I would how, how so, Miss Sewell? Ms. Sewell, can you explain your answer? Section to form I said no. Out. So I did not provide my request five days before I filed the lawsuit. Is that your statement? That's not what I said. You're twisting my words again. Can you tell me what your statement was? Because if I misinterpreted. You asked me if six days is more than five. I said yes. Then I asked you if a week is more than a business day, and you said yes. Yeah, yeah, I did Then I answer. asked you, did I provide written notice at least five days in advance of filing my complaint? And you said no. You did I'm not file a notice. All you filed was your public record request. That's what I'm understanding. So what notice am I supposed to file, Ms. Sewell? I don't know. You, you're the one asking the questions. You're the one inferring you're, you're, you're this You're the one who swore to this statement, Ms. Sewell. What statement did I swore? Let, 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 let me talk for a second. Mm -hmm. You swore to this statement, and you just told me I didn't provide you five days notice. What notice am I supposed to provide you for five, that five days? Dr. McDonough, again, this is a, a legal objection to an interrogatory that you're referring to. You said you're going to ask her to, to provide she said, a legal opinion. She said I didn't opinion. provide notice five days. I'm wondering how I did not provide notice five days when it was six weeks. She answered your question. It was six weeks from the re request. You're, you're presuming that notice and your written request are the same thing. There's a legal argument that they are not. That's the basis of oh, the objection. Do you have a single piece of shred of case law to support that, sir? A single shred of case law to support that argument? There, we're not going to get into the legal argument here. The point is, that's an issue that can be addressed in front of the judge, but it's a legal argument. 
Okay. She's not, the witness is not here to testify as to legal opinion or argument. So you say. Okay, Ms. Sewell, let me see, minimize this a little bit so you can see the whole thing so it's not blocked. Can you see, can you see the document I'm sharing now? Yeah. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna move it over just so we can see everything. Ms. Sewell, Florida Statute 119.12, Section 1, Paragraph B is highlighted. Could you read the highlighted section? The complainants provide written notice identifying the public record request to the agency's custodian of public records at least five business days before filing the civil action. Okay. Do you know if this is a section of law that's being referred to in the interrogatory where it says I didn't give five day notice? No, I don't know. You don't know, okay. Did anything that you see in that paragraph require me to give notice that I think the city is not complying with the law? Objection, the witness is a, a fact witness, a lay witness, not an expert and not, and certainly not a lawyer and not here okay. to testify to about statutory interpretation right, we'll, we'll or along. legal opinions. We'll move along. Ms. Stuhl, did I email you my request? Yes, sir. Was my email a written or verbal communication? Written. Did my e email note, was my email notification of my request? Pardon me? What was my email notification of my request? You sent me an email requesting records. And that notified you of my request, correct? I received an email from you requesting records. And so my email notified you that I was submitting a records request. Check the form. Correct? Your email, I received an email from you requesting records. And that's how you got notification that I was filing a records request, right? I didn't call you on the telephone, did I? I received an email from you requesting the record. Okay, and that was notification of my records request. I received an email from it, you. What was that notification of my records request? I received an email from you. The fact is, I received an email from you requesting your records. Did my email identify my records that I saw? Yes. So my email identified the records request I sought and was your notification that I was seeking such records. Is that correct? Section to form. I received an email from you requesting records. Do you agree that the fact that records were provided to me is evidence that my email identified the records requested? Section to form. You're asking her to, to testify as to what is evidence of something? I, I'm saying the fact that I shoot you an email asking for specific records and those records are then given to me, we agree that my email identified the records that I was seeking, correct? Yes. Okay. And we established that you're the custodian records for the city of Homestead, correct? Yes. Did I send my email request to esool at cityofhomestead.com? Yes. And that's the email address to send public records to? Yes. And we've established that this address is primarily displayed in the clerk's office to inform, is that correct? Yes. And is that display to inform requesters where to send their records request to? Yes. Do you wish to retract the statement from your answer that I did not comply with this five-day provision? Objection to form. And again, the statement is part of a, a legal objection to an interrogatory. I understand you, you often don't cooperate either, Mr. Zeskai. Ms. Sewell, do you agree that as an agent of the city, you're obligated to the commandments of chapter 119? Objection to form. Yes. Okay. Would you agree based on what you have admitted on, to on the record that it appears I have met all the requirements in this paragraph that I'm showing you right now? Objection to form. Again, she's not here to testify about legal conclusions or interpretations of the statute. Look, look, 
if she was, if you were just relying on what she signed unknowingly in the interrogatory, it'd be one thing. But she came and herself volunteered a direct statement on the record that I did not comply. So that's absolutely relevant. It's absolutely relevant to the determination. It's this positive this case, sir. You know that. I didn't say that it wasn't relevant. I said that she's not here to testify as to a legal conclusion. You you can get each of the factual questions which you've done. You asked and she responded. Now you're asking her to give you the legal conclusion, which is not appropriate. She's not here to testify about legal interpretations of the statute or provide you with legal conclusions. She's a fact witness. So that was my objection. I didn't say it wasn't relevant. You went through your factual questions regarding that and she provided you the factual responses. Last sentence, therefore, plaintiff therefore cannot be entitled to recover costs for last two sentences. Plaintiff therefore cannot be retitled to cover costs as such this matter is moot. Do you think this matter is moot, Ms. Sewell? <laughs> Same objection, part of a legal objection to the interrogatory, it's a legal conclusion. It's not, a, a fa that's not a, a, a fact question for the witness. Okay, uh, maybe I'll be able to call you as a witness at trial, Mr. Zeskine, and you can explain where you got this information from. Dr. McDonough, <laughs> we're allowed to make legal objections to interrogatories, which- well, Yeah, you, you, you also made factual allegations that are false. You do realize that, Mr. Zeskine, that it violates rule regulating the Florida Bar 4-3.3 for you to knowingly submit false evidence to the court, correct? Dr. McDonough, I'm not going to get into a back and forth exchange I know, I know. with you on this. Ms. Sewell, do you really believe that the city's response to all three subject records requests was completely lawful and above board with respect to unjustified delay? As far as I know, we provided you all the records that was provided to the clerk's office. That's what I can testify to. Ms. Sewell, can you explain why you failed to produce any documentation to support any of your answers in the interrogatories? Okay. The city attorney has already explained that to you, Mr. McDonough. Could that be because there's no evidence to support your allegations? Section to four, what's your question? It is the fact that uh, they, let me think about how to rephrase this since people don't apparently understand. Is the fact that no evidence was produced in the interrogatories could that be because there is no evidence to support that allegation? If you don't know why no documentation was provided, you can say you don't know why no documentation was provided, Ms. Sewell. Uh, uh, same objection again. The, you you you're talking about Mr. interrogatories. Mr. Sewell, can you explain why you failed to list any witnesses with knowledge of the interrogatories? City attorney has explained to you that that was done by the, the city attorney's office. Ms. Sewell, are you aware of any other witnesses that would have personal knowledge related to how these records requests were dealt with? No. Ms. Sewell, can I ask if you're on any alcohol medication or drugs which will prevent you from being able to truthfully answer my questions today? What? Have you taken any alcohol, drugs, or medications that prevent you from being able to truthfully answer my questions today or understand my questions? Sam? You can answer that question, Elizabeth. No. No. Okay, it's simple. Did you hear what this man just asked? <laughs> that's a standard deposition question Mr. Zeskon you want to tell her that gets asked in almost every deposition particularly when we have squirrely questions like this or responses okay well I just informed you Ms. Sewell sorry your attorney doesn't want to be helpful with you Dr. McDonough move to strike that I, I told her to answer the question don't don't <laughs> don't create issues where there aren't any 
She answered the question after I instructed her to answer it. Yeah, I, I appreciate you instructing her to answer. I'm just saying that she's acting like I'm um, preposterous for asking a question, and it's a very common deposition question. Okay. I mean, you don't object to that, do you, Mr. Zeskind? I mean, I'm I, sure you've asked that in most of your depositions as well, correct? You never asked that in a deposition? I know you're not going to Dr. McDonough, move, move, move along. along. I did not Ms. object Ms. to her. I didn't Ms. object Ms. Do to you have question? any explanation for your answers here today? or your actions and omissions in responding to my subject records request. Check to form. I answered your questions to the best of my ability. Ms. Sewell, would you like to change any of your answers? No. Past or present? No. Okay. Ms. Sewell, are you aware that the city has repeatedly claimed that I filed my request in lawsuits for an improper purpose? No. Do you believe that I filed my request or lawsuits for an improper purpose? I don't know. Do you have any evidence that I ever filed for an improper purpose? I don't know. Do you think that the city's claim that I filed for an improper purpose holds water? Objection to form. <laughs> and she's already she's already told you she doesn't she doesn't know about the improper purpose okay. issue. Ms. Sewell, can you support any of the allegations that were made in the interrogatories personally? If if you can't, just say no. Objection to form. Yes, no. I'm almost done, Miss Sewell. We can sit here until 3.30 when Chief Roll comes in if you want. I need a yes or a no. I don't understand your question. Can, do you have any knowledge of anything that would support the legal conclusions you made in the interrogatories? If they were completely prepared by opposing counsel and you have no knowledge of it, you can say you have no knowledge of it. If you do have knowledge that would support the legal conclusions, please provide it. I okay. don't have knowledge. You don't have knowledge. Okay. And the same thing. Do you have any knowledge that would support the allegations you made in the interrogatories? This being the allegations, not the legal conclusions. Objection to form. If you have knowledge that supports the allegations you made in the interrogatories, could you provide us with some of those, Ms. Sewell? Objection to form. Ask her a specific question. What, what allegations are you referring to? The allegation that they didn't take six weeks to give me the first set of records in the first. Those request. have been asked and answered. I'm asking if she has support for the legal allegate, any support for the allegations. You want to move on? We move on. Okay. You can't answer it. I'm wondering who you're going to bring in as a witness to court that's going to be able to answer any of this. Ms. Sewell, do you still stand behind every allegation conclusion you made and swore to in the interrogatories? Ms. Sewell, do you still stand behind every allegation and conclusion you made and swore to in the interrogatories or are you withdrawing and correcting them? Objection to form, again, mischaracterizes what the interrogatories include, legal conclusion. She's not swearing to legal conclusions. The legal okay. conclusions are made by counsel. Are, are, Factual you responses still stand behind are made every allegation corporate representative made and swore to in the interrogatories, Ms. Sewell. Ms. Sewell, do you still stand behind every allegation you made and swore to in the interrogatories? Section to form. I have four more questions, three more questions after this, Ms. Sewell. I mean, I'll sit here for the next 40 minutes if you want to sit here. Would you like to answer my question? The city attorney has already answered your question. No, the city attorney not asked. He objected when I asked for allegation and conclusion. I changed my question. Do you still stand behind every allegation you made and swore to in the interrogatories, or are you going to withdraw them? Objection to form. The witness has not made any allegations in the interrogatories. That's the basis of my objection. That's the reason why you're not getting an answer. 
Well, she could say no. If she has no knowledge, she can say no. No, but the, no the, your, your question lacks the foundation. It, it, the, there's no allegations made by the witness within the interrogatory. So that's why that's the basis for my objection. It's also the reason why you're, I think you're not getting an answer. Ms. Sewell, going over what we've gone over today and looking at the exhibits and the questions, do you believe that your testimony today and, and uh, why do you believe that your testimony today based on the interrogatories is credible and should be considered seriously by the court? Those are my answers to your questions, Mr. McDonough. Thank you for your time, Ms. Sewell. I have no further questions. Witness will read. Did you say something, Sam? I just was informing the court reporter that you'll read the transcript. Oh, okay. Okay. Am I free to go? Free to go. Unless Mr. Zeskind has questions for you, I'm done. Yeah. Sam, anything you need for me? Nope, you're free to go, Elizabeth. Thanks. Thank you.